This Veterans History Project interview was being conducted on Wednesday, October the 6th in the year... Nope, October 4th. October the 4th in the year 2017 here at the Niles Main District Library. My name is Neil O'Shea and I'm a member of the reference staff here and I'm speaking with Mr. Alan Schaefer. Mr. Schaefer was born on the 22nd of October in 1946 and he now lives in Morton Grove. He was born in Chicago. Mr. Schaefer learned of the Veterans History Project through the veterans group that meets at Dunkin' Donuts here in Niles on, on Dumpster Street. On Dumpster Street. Yeah. That's usually on Tuesday mornings. Tuesday mornings. And um, Mr. Schaefer has kindly consented to be interviewed for the project, and here is his story. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, is it okay if I address you as Alan? Of course. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, um, the first question, uh, do you remember when, when you entered the service? I do. I um, was graduated from high school, knew I wasn't going to college. My neighbor was a first lieutenant in the Army. He came home on leave, and I said, I would like to enlist, but I want to make sure that when I do enlist, I get some kind of training. So when I come out of the service, I'll have some kind of a skill. And he says, well, let me take you down to the recruiting office. So we both went down there, and I enlisted for three years, and I asked to be a cook. I am, my MOS was 94B20. Yeah, you graduated from high school. Did you attend high school in the area? Niles West. Niles West. Graduated in 1965. 1965. And um, so when your service dates are when you're January the 29th, 1965? No, November. November. November, I see. I missed the 11th. Yeah. So um, did you have the expectation that you might wind up going into the, you might be drafted or at that time or? You know, um, I wasn't really thinking about the draft. I was thinking more about what I'm going to do. With the next few years and constructive yeah. and make sense. Right. Uh, one of the veterans I interviewed during this time period, he had, uh, it wasn't in Illinois, I think it might have been in another state, but when he went down to enlist, they told him there was no room in the three-year plan, so he had to go in the four-year plan. He might not have been in the Army. Yeah, he was in the Navy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a difference. Yeah. So... Uh, so then you enlisted for the for the army for the army for three years, right? And then um, did they? Um, so where was your? Um, so from there, basic training. In I did basic area? training at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and then after graduating from basic training, <coughs> I got shipped to Fort Lee, Virginia, and it was a quartermaster school, and it was about a twelve-week class on all about sanitation, cooking in the field, cooking in the mess hall, baking, sanitation, storage of food. You felt like you were really learning something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you take any courses in high school that, were, that uh, tended in that direction? I did, I did take home ec in, ah, in high school. Ah, so there it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's the one I enjoyed. <laughs> they had me in uh, mechanics and wood class, and I hated that. <laughs> yeah. Um, was, was, was that the first time you were away from home for any length of time? Yes. And that was, was my first time into the real world. And was it a little bit of an adjustment being in the... You know, it, it was, um, but I managed it pretty well. I, I had my faith, and I went to church every Sunday. And, uh, you were able to continue to practice your faith yes, in the... Uh, in, in fact, I was even an altar boy. Uh, on, on the on the on the base. Mm. And so when you say altar boy, is there a particular? Is that a Catholic church? Then? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So were you one of the parishes around here? No, it was a, a, it was at basic training and at Fort Lee, Virginia, on our mm -hmm. on, on the on the army base. Yeah. They would have services on Sunday. Yeah. And I would assist the, the priest with mass. Yeah. 
Now, I was wondering if you're from any, are there any parishes in this area that you're associated with? Uh, yes, St. Peter's. St. Peter's, yeah. 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 Um, so when you... Um, At St. Peter's Catholic Church. Yes. Um, so your basic training is in, is in Fort Knox, and then they ship you to Camp Fort Lee, Virginia. Fort Lee, Virginia for the um, for three Master months school. quartermaster school. Yeah, 12 weeks. 12 weeks. So after, and um, then it's do, you, do, do you get better food then if you're the quartermaster? Oh, oh, oh. We, we got a lot of perks. Did a lot you, of perks. Did you, did you gain weight while you were in the Army? No. 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 <laughs> yeah. Were there any, um, how about in, in basic training, any memorable uh, drill instructors or? No. No. And anybody, any types of people you encountered that you just couldn't get along with, didn't get along with? No, not no. at all. Yeah. And we were all brothers in arms, and we knew what was going on, and yeah. we all got along fine. Yeah. So then from uh, from Virginia, then, what's next? Well, that was the big order I got, Vietnam. How did that go over? Well, they gave me a 30-day leave, came home, got engaged to my high school sweetheart, she was uh, going into uh, her senior year, and we've been married for 50 years now. So I don't know if this is... So do you think the fact that you, you were going to Vietnam, do you think that was a, a factor in, in the timing of your engagement? Probably. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And was that, that maybe, for sure. For sure. And was that lady at Niles West with you? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Her name was Linda Friedman. She lived in Lincolnwood. And um, how did the, how do, how did you, were your parents a little bit worried about it at that time or not? I'm sure they yeah. you know but they didn't really come out and say it. Mm -hmm. But they were concerned like any good parent yeah. would be. Were you the were you the only son or? No, I had a, a younger brother, and, and he was graduating from Niles West also, and then going to Northern Illinois when I was uh, in Vietnam. Yeah. Or in the service for the. Was there years. a tradition of military service in your family? Yes, definitely. My. Uh, all my mom's brothers, and my father, all served. So you grew up with the yes. appreciation and yeah. familiarity with American. Yes. In fact, as a kid, I always wanted to go to uh, West Point, but I didn't have the, uh, the. I was a slow learner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had a learning disability, so. How, was that reading or left to right or? It was a little bit of everything. Yeah. 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 Then the cooking was a great uh, kind of a practical, useful. Yes. That benefits your fellow right. human beings in a real basic way. It's yeah, a great for choice. sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Definitely. So you come back to Chicago then for, for a thirty month, day leave. Thirty days. Get engaged. Get engaged. So your your future wife saw you in your uniform. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then when the day came. I flew, that was the first time I was ever on a plane, no, is that the first time? The first time on a plane was from Fort Lee, Virginia to home, and then all the way to California. And we uh, we left on Continental Airlines out of San Francisco. Our first stop was in Hawaii, second stop was at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines, and the last stop was of course Thompson Newton, Saigon, where we came in the country and processed in country. Did you find it warm when you landed? It was. <laughs> Very warm. Yeah. Um, it must have taken a little while to adjust to the climate. It did, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And then um, after processing through um, in Saigon, they put me on a C-130 plane and sent me to Cameron Bay, which was our headquarters for the 71st Artillery. And then Cameron Bay, that must have been a kind of a big installation because there would have been Navy there too? Yeah, yeah, it was a big port, a very big port. So you're attached to artillery, but you don't have, you're not going to be firing any guns, are you? You're going to be it wasn't the guns, it was a Hawk missile site. Okay, and we protected two ports, Cameron Bay and the tram, from any air attacks. 
okay? I was stationed at the train at Camp McDermott in what we call Tent City. And then we would have to prepare food for the company that was on the ground that were that was off, okay, because they would rotate up the hill to the missile site. And we would have to get food up to them also. So we took food up by truck to the missile site, plus feed the ones down at the, the base camp. Yeah, so you'd feed the people down below, and right. you'd also... Feed the ones up at the missile site. Picnics up or whatever up at right. the missile site. Right. They must have been glad to see you coming. Oh, they were. <laughs> one veteran said the quarter, one veteran said the quartermaster and somebody else. He's, they're the most important people. They're yeah. the most important people. Quartermaster and the uh, um, supply sergeant. Yeah. yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. And was there um, plenty of, plenty of food to work with? And there was. Yeah. We even had Vietnamese um, help that would do all the hard kitchen cleanup, pots and pans, and all that. Okay, so the soldiers didn't have to do any of that, like a basic training, you know, there wasn't any KP, as they called it. Yeah, so the folks that you're working with there, the, the, uh, the military people, you're, you're, um, they're not eating sea rations or anything. No. Like, no, this is, this is good stuff. Yeah. And then... Uh, I mean, we had big... For Thanksgiving, we had turkeys. Same thing with Christmas. And then these Hawk missile batteries, did they, did they ever fire or were they just in case or? They, they were set up ready to fire if they had to because Cameron Bay was a huge port I would imagine. where a lot of the supplies came in. Yeah. And the train was um, not, not as big of a port, but it, it was where the special forces were at their air base. So we wanted to protect the, the fifth special forces from any air attacks. Yeah. Um. Did you have any trouble um, sleeping in the, out in the... We slept in a tent. It wasn't too hot or... You know what? You get used to it. But we had mosquito nets. Yeah. Okay, because the mosquitoes were bad. So we were on a beachhead, um, and the back of us was the China Sea. In front of us was the perimeter with um, hills and jungle. You never um, came down with malaria then or any... No, but we took... We took lot of pills malaria and prevention. Malaria pills and yeah. had all that. We even had a PX on the base. We had an entertainment section on the base where you could watch movies, play slot machines, lose your paycheck. Yeah, and in terms of um, gambling, did you do... Was there smoking and drinking and... Drinking. I wasn't a smoker. And, of course... Little gambling. Yeah. So you never smoked before you went in the army. No, I was uh, pretty involved in athletes at Niles was football, basketball, baseball. Yeah. So I didn't really smoke. Yeah, but you wouldn't mind a beer maybe. Or oh. So there was and there was beer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Any particular kind of beer or? You know, I knew you might ask me. Oh dear, because I'm, I'm a beer man myself. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink pop at all. But I don't recall what kind of beer it was. It yeah. was maybe it was it was some kind of domestic beer. So it could have been Meisterbrau. Oh, okay. Or I think I, I want to say Meisterbrau. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when you arrive in uh, in Vietnam, what rank are you at that time? I was just um, an E two. An E two. Yeah. Um, so that's like a private first class? Yeah, yeah it's a, little, a little above that. A little above that. Yeah, well, right, call it private. Well, private first class or corporal or something like that. Yeah. So, you, but you got a promotion to um, E5. Yes. When, how did that come about? Or? Well, I think Captain Smith, who was in charge of our company, saw the work I was doing every day and uh, kept the morale of the men up. And that's, that mm -hmm. he noticed so I, I managed to get uh, E5 fairly quickly. And the nice thing um, was that the Morton Grove Women's Club, there were about six or seven Morton Grove boys in Vietnam when I was there. And 
out of the six or seven, they pick me to adopt. Okay, and there's lots of articles about me in the local Morton Grove Champion newspaper. Champion. Yep. And I can bring them to you if you want to scan them. Yeah, a couple of pages would work nice. Okay. Could work nice. And so they adopted my, me and my whole platoon. And I was, I was the guy everybody wanted to hang out with because I got all the goodies. Okay. Goodies would have been cookies or magazines? Cookies, or? cookies uh, soap, shampoo. Yeah, like toothpaste. Toothpaste, or, yeah. toothbrush. Yeah. You know, they sent everything. Yeah, yeah. They were so wonderful. Yeah. So you said, um, was that quartermaster school you attended? Did yes. You say? Um, quartermastering involves more than cooking, though, right? Or not necessarily? Yeah, but yeah. At, at, for me it was cooking. For me it was the cooking. The quartermaster could have been supplies, yeah. you know, different things. Yeah. So um, was it easy enough to stay in touch with your family when you were in the... You know, I was very lucky with that also. Uh, back then, I could talk to my girlfriend or my parents through a ham radio operator. Somehow, these ham operator radios would help with communicating us back home. And, you know, it was, hi, how you doing, over. Oh, yeah. It was a ham, ham radio. And there was no censorship or anybody? No, no. no. I wonder if the if the authorities knew that or something. I, I don't know. know. Yeah. So the ham radio person would have been some some American soldier on the. Yeah. Or just American person. American person. Yeah. 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 So at, at this base, you're feeding just army people at the Correct. base. Correct. Yeah. I suppose the Navy had their own crowd, did they? Oh yeah. Yeah. I wonder how the Navy food was compared to the army. Food. I don't know. <laughs> the. Um, so did you, uh, did you get any R&R &R while you were there? I did. I got an R&R &R, uh, and I decided to go to Hong Kong. And I went to Hong Kong in February and that was their New Year's. So that was kind of interesting. But the reason why I picked Hong Kong, because I was getting married when I came back from Vietnam and I wanted to get a tuxedo custom made. So I got a tuxedo custom made and had it shipped back home. And then when I came home, my wife had graduated from Niles West, and two weeks later she got married, and then we honeymooned across the country because I was stationed at Fort Lewis in Washington, Washington. State yeah. for a year. Um, so when you were at the um, at Cameron Bay there, um, it said you were good at uh, lifting the morale. Did um, did you feel any pressure or stress there? Or? You know. I was only in Cameron Bay for a few days. Oh. Okay. And then they sent me to Natrang. Natrang. Yeah. The Camp McDermott. Mm -hmm. To our other missile site. Yeah. And, and that's you, where I stayed for the rest of the yeah. year. And did you feel any um Yeah, well stress our, our, our base camp, okay, it was a big it was a big what they call tent city. And it was on a beachhead. And our base camp did get hit a few times the perimeter. Okay, some sniper fire and things like that. But uh, never it was called a red alert and they put up flares and lit up the sky and did you have to wear a helmet when you were oh, yeah. taking the food up to oh, the oh sure yeah yeah, yeah. and a, even a, even a flight jacket yeah a flak yeah flak yeah. jacket and did you carry a gun even when you were doing I did it? not did no no pistol no gun yeah so did uh, did any famous entertainers come anywhere near you yeah that was a disappointing thing i was hoping bob hope would come by but we did have some pretty good entertainers. Um, I can remember four ladies from the Philippines that did a great job singing and keeping us entertained. Um, the morale of the your the morale of the people you serve with um, did it need boosting or lifting up? You know, there's always some of that going on, definitely. Yeah. But overall, we had it pretty good. Um, do you recall any particular, uh, particularly humorous or unusual events or something that uh, something crazy that? Yeah. Not in Vietnam. No, no. Yeah. In, in Fort Lewis, yes. 
That's what's coming up next. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you, you, under the terms of the service or whatever, you had to spend a year in Vietnam then? Correct. So then you come, so then you, did you have a choice then where you were being shipped to? No. No, no. not at all. So what was going on in, uh, why did the Army want to put you at Fort Lewis? Suppose they just needed another cook there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when I came back from Vietnam, um, I, I was on leave for 30 days. Like I said, my wife and I then drove out to, uh, after our wedding, drove out to Fort Lewis. And they put me in a uh, mess hall. I was the first cook. And uh, we lived off base in an apartment, which was very nice since we just got married. And I think it probably helped our marriage because we were on our own away from our, our mm -hmm. parents, halfway across the country. Yeah, good and bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and my wife found a job uh, working at Nally's. She was a secretary to an executive vice president. And uh, it was really pretty good to the point where I almost thought I would re-enlist. That's really one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah, really, yeah. really, really enjoyed the service. Uh, I, I liked the structure of it. Um, but when it came to re-enlisting, I gave it a lot of thought, and at the end I decided maybe I'll go home and start a family and be stationed in one area. Would that have been, would that, would that have been your wife's preference too, do you yes, think? Yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But she would have done mm -hmm. whatever. A team, yeah. Yeah. So you're in Fort Lewis then for a year? Yes, for a year. Nothing, nothing uh, crazy happened there. Oh yeah. Oh, what was that? Yeah. Well, we're preparing Thanksgiving dinner, and it takes about two to three days to prepare because you're feeding over 300 men. I don't remember how many women were with us in that company, but um, we uh, were in the process of making pumpkin pie. So we've got the big mixture. I'm sure you've seen the big bowls. Mm -hmm. You put the, you know, and then they. Well, the bowl wasn't secure enough, and when he turned the mixture on, it flipped over on the floor. So we got all this pumpkin on the floor. So we took a squeezy, squeezed it up, and put it back in the pot. Nobody knew the difference. Best pumpkin pie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Cause uh, otherwise we wouldn't have had pumpkin pie. And that would have been uh, that, terrible. You can't do that. No, but listen, uh, the fact that it was going to be boiled or something, that would have killed oh, yeah. any germs? Yeah, yeah, it was going to be cooked. So your conscience was clear. Clear. Yeah. 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 But, uh, I don't, the story did not get out. <laughs> Nobody knew that, right? Nobody knew it. Yeah. It did not get out at all. So when, you're, when you plan the meals, is, it, is there like a book you follow or based on the quantities that, that are present in the... To an extent, yeah. yeah. You know, they, they, they issued X amount of food every meal and that's what you had to work with. Yeah. And um, so it down... So Fort Lewis, and then there's the, the this decision on whether to the re enlist or not, then you come back to yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Did you have any difficulty uh, adjusting to life in Chicago or getting a job or anything? Not at all. Not at all. When I came out of the service, I uh, ended up getting a, my first job with Golden Bear Pancake House as a night manager. And they wanted me to start as a night manager. They knew I was a cook in the Army. And this was in River Forest on North Avenue, just a little west of Harlem. Mm -hmm. And they had owned maybe 12 Golden Bear Pancake Houses. And uh, so I learned how to be a night manager, and I knew all about food and sanitation and food costs and all that. And uh, then worked my way up to a, a day manager and then a general manager. As a general manager, did you have more than one store to worry about? No. I, I, they shipped me to the store in Des Plaines. It was on Route 83 in Mount Prospect between Oakton and Minor Street. And I, that was my store. 
and then you and your wife were you living in uh, this place it displays it that was perfect wasn't it yeah 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 and um did you have to like hire sh hire cooks and chefs? Oh and yeah, all of that. Watch what they're doing. Yep, and, yep, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And uh, if one good thing about being a cook, where if the cook didn't show up because he was sick or something, I was able to go back in the kitchen and fill in. Mm -hmm. And you didn't get any complaints from the customers. No, you? not when I was back there. Um. So did you did you stay in contact with any wartime buddies after you the know, service or anything? Or? You know, I wish I did, but I just got married, starting to raise a family, and was concerned about making a living. Amen. Yeah. You know, and I I, I did not stay in contact with anybody. So, um, in your family, do you ever do any cooking at home? I do all the cooking at home. I go. I do all the grocery shopping. Now that I'm retired for the last seven or eight years, I do all the grocery shopping and I do all the cooking for my wife and I. Wow! Oh, I bet she's, that she, she. She. Do you let do you allow her to cook at any time if she wants to? Or? Sure, I, okay. I don't mind taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> she's a good cook too. Yeah. And then, did you stay in the food business then for your, your life? Yeah. You know, um, from. The Golden Bear Pancake House. I then moved down to Fred Harvey. Remember the Fred mm -hmm. Harvey? They ran two um, steak places. Well, maybe no, three. It was called Shipwreck Kelly's. There was one at Midway Airport. There was one in Hinsdale called the Old Spinning Wheel, and then there was one in in the city called the Old Coons Home. So I created um, that one. Okay. Yeah. So then from Golden Bear, I was working down in the city at the old Coons home, and it was called Shipwreck Kelly's. It was a, like a, a steak salad bar type of... The Coons home, did they ever have like miniature puppets? puppets? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. But that was before, okay, we were just in the building mm -hmm. at the Coons home. And um, across the street was Hanley Dawson Cadillac. And a lot of the salesmen would come in and spend three hours for lunch and drink their lunch. And I'm working 70 hours a week, and the bartender's temperamental, and the waitresses don't show up, and no dishwasher. And I'm saying to myself, why am I in the restaurant business? And Hanley Dawson used to come into the restaurant for lunch or dinner, and I always took good care of him, not because I wanted a job, but hoping someday to afford a Cadillac. Maybe I can get a good deal. Well, I got fed up. We got robbed one night at the restaurant down in, down in the old Coons home. Mm -hmm. Lucky nobody got injured or hurt. And uh, at that point, I says, you know, I want to spend more time with my family. I'm going to go across the street and talk to Hanley Dawson and see if I can sell Cadillacs. And he hired me. And then I've been in the car business ever since, so I retired eight years ago. And you were in the Cadillacs? Cadillacs, uh, mostly Cadillacs for 13, 14 years, and then a little bit with Mitsubishi, which was owned by Hanley Dawson. And then I went on my own as a used car dealer. May I ask what kind of a car you drive now? Well, I finally bought a new car, because I've driven used cars my whole life. And people always ask me, what should I buy? It's whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you like. I ended up buying a, an Audi Q5. And you're, you're satisfied. Oh, it's a great car. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think of the quality of the food these days? Is it as good as it used to be? You know, I, I think I think it has improved because you see a lot of uh, at the farmers markets now. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find and like you can find fresher food. I think at some yeah. of the better stores. Yeah. yeah. So because um, you've got organic now, you've got grass fed. You have a lot more choices. The more choices, yeah. 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 Um. 
So, Ellen, I, I, I sense that we're coming to the end. And then, when did you um, when did you move to Morton Grove? I lived in Morton Grove my whole life. Ah, uh, even okay. when you were in Des Plaines, it was still well, except for the two years in you, Des Plaines. Yeah. Yeah. Then we moved. When I started working at um, after working at Hanley Dawson for six months, okay. My wife and I then bought a house in Morton Grove. But I grew up in Morton Grove on uh, 8344 Gross Point Road, which is Gross Point and Main Street. Went to Edison, Jun Edison Junior School and then Lincoln Grammar School in Skokie and then Niles West. Yeah. We were the first four-year graduating class at Niles West. I sense we're coming to the um, to the end of the interview, and there's a couple of questions they always sure. Uh, Please yeah. do. So, um, how do you think your military service and your experiences affected your life? Oh, uh, it sure gave me a um, an appreciation of how lucky I was to go to Vietnam and come back, because. A few of my classmates from Niles West didn't make it back. And uh, when I finally got to retire, I finally went and looked them up and went to wherever they were buried and got to visit their grave. And um, do you think, um, did, you, has your, did your experience in the military has it influenced your thinking about war or about the military in general? I support it 100 percent. Yeah. Duty, honor, and country. And I was just thinking that um, the um, the training you received is in the um, home economics line in the cooking that was. Very that carried you. Sure did. Yeah. So you leave. You go into the car sales business. Is that about nineteen? That had to be seventy-two. Nineteen seventy-two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to add that we haven't covered in the interview, or that I haven't? Uh, you have a lot of notes there. Maybe we didn't. We, we should touch on those. Yeah. Let's see. Just at the 71st Artillery was a Hawk missile site that occupied Hill 580 south of the Trang and an airfield where the 5th Special Forces were headquarters. In 1966, the 6th Battalion 71st Artillery relocated to Cameron Bay and had its headquarters there. It departed Vietnam September 22, 1968 for Fort Bliss, Texas. Our, our slogan um, was, we come from all parts, and it was in Latin. I'm a member of the American uh, Legion, Post 14. I'm a member of the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 311, here in Niles. The, um, the American um, Legion, is that, do you meet monthly, or...? Uh, it does meet monthly, correct. And but that, that particular post-14 is in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So do you attend meetings in Puerto Vallarta? I do. I, I spend the winter there. Oh, lovely. And um, we do a lot of community work. Yeah. You're still active in your church? Or Very. Yeah. And then the... Um, the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 311, do they have a particular location or headquarters? Or Originally, it started here in Niles, okay, and it was on Oakton Street at the, was that, was, I, I forget what the name of the building was, but now, um, now we meet at Oakton Arms, which is a, a retirement home on Oakton, a little west of Manhattan Road. So, um, yeah. Um, so when you, you didn't, you weren't able because of the uh, 
pace of life and whatever to um, stay in contact with any of your wartime buddies. But then, um, but you did join a veterans organization. You have joined veterans organizations. When did you do that? I didn't do that, Neil, until the Welcome Home Parade in Chicago in 1986. That's when I finally got involved. And uh, I've talked to a couple, a, a couple, a couple of Vietnam veterans, mostly been interviewing World War II veterans and mm -hmm. Korean War. But um, both of them mentioned the significance, the importance of that welcome home. Right. Yeah. 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 You would agree with that? Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. Because we didn't really talk much about anything until then. And that was a parade in downtown Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Was that in? The fall of '86 or spring? Uh, yeah, uh, no, it was in the spring. If I'm not mistaken. Spring of '86. Yeah. yeah. Well, if there's anything you want to, you'd like to add to the interview, Alan, we yeah, can we I'm can do that even at a later date. No, I think I've got it's, it all. Uh, thanks for preparing uh, your remarks. And uh, we have the biographical data information sheet, which will be part of the, the set that goes to Washington. Okay. Yeah, it won't be like for, this won't be for public. Sure. Uh, they won't have access to this. And so, uh, um, so we thank you for your service, and we thank you for coming in for the interview. Thank you for doing all this. Sure. Thing.